okay so in the last video we have discussed the scenario where you would be integrating two different systems right and uh, basically we are going to you know uh, integrate a uh, salesforce org with another salesforce org right and we had given a name of the first org as source right where you have the data and a destination salesforce work where you are going to push the data so when you're pushing the data from source to destination destination org supposed to give you what the api the web service the rest api so in this video we are going to talk about how to create a custom rest api by the way when exactly you will create a custom api see for every standard custom object if you want to do insert update delete or any standard you know just operations right standard api is more than enough right it will help you to do that right you don't have to write any code if you have a third party system which wants to consume your your salesforce api all you need to do is like how i have shown you in the last video right go to your workbench try to find the api and give it to them we are not doing anything but the moment you have a custom logic right you have a custom logic that let's say you know you are receiving one lead id from erp system and with that corresponding lead ID, ID, you have to do so many things. You have to do so many uh, background check. You have to do so much. Of, you have to write so much of business logic. That's when we have to write a custom API, right? So I'm going to show you. This is a very simple way to create an API. Writing an API in Salesforce is not a big code, actually. Salesforce has already given us the library. All we have to do is we have to, you know, understand the library and we have to understand how to use it. OK, so let's get into the screen. So I have, uh, you know, Postman open. In my left hand side, I have this source org, which is my Salesforce org. In my right hand side, I have the destination org. Okay. So in my destination org, check out this destination. Always look at the URL okay, to identify whether it's a source org or destination org. In my destination org, I have created a REST API. This is the Apex class. This is the Apex class, what we have written. Okay. Now let me go and explain you line by line and make this code like very crystal clear and easy to understand for you all right check this out so uh, what is the difference between normal apex class and the rest api <clears throat> first of all why you are writing this code right what is the use of writing this apex code see api is what i'm just, I'm just trying to repeat again uh, which we have discussed in the first video okay api is basically your apex class your apex class has some business logic which needs to be called by or invoked by a third party system now the third party system cannot call like you know lead api dot what is the method name get lead by id your third party system cannot call this particular method get lead id by just class name dot method name you cannot call it right i mean outside of salesforce org how can you call this apex class and the method not possible that's the reason why this apex class that you're seeing in my screen to expose this publicly so that the third party system or any other system can call this you have to create this as an api that is called web service so web service is nothing but the apex class that you have written if you want to expose it so that the third party system can consume it you have to convert this api with just an url right that's the rest api and how can you do that okay so first thing is you have to go and write this call at the rate rest resource you know what is this at the rate rest resource so if you have if you have observed the test class video right we have mentioned at the rate test is test at the rate future what is this doing right this annotations telling this annotations means that this is not a normal apex class this is basically your a class which has been going to be exposed as a rest api all right so this class you have to always write rest resource at the rate rest resource you have to write i'm going to give you this uh, particular code but you don't have to find right if you go to google right you get this particular code standard in in salesforce help descriptions i mean documentations right all you need to do is copy this code understand this code write your own logic what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to just going to explain this code to you so that you as a developer can understand it and can tweak this code however you want right so very first thing to make system understand that this is not a normal apex class this is going to be a salesforce rest api you have to write this at the rate rest resource got it now what is called url mapping <clears throat> okay let's understand this url mapping okay see this particular apex class called lead api class name is what lead api now when your third party system is going to call this lead api class they cannot call it by class name 
they have to call it via this URL mapping. This URL mapping is nothing but the class name. So, I mean, you can give the class name as something and URL mapping as something else. I'll show you where exactly you have to use this, okay? So, URL mapping, whatever you put XYZ ABC, uh, you know, that name is going to be used inside your REST API, okay? So, this is something that you have to use in your API just to identify that you're calling this particular Apex class, all right? Then your Apex class, okay, uh, you know, this global public, right? So, basically, you know, this, uh, the, the REST API class has to be global. Why? Because you are trying to call this REST API logic right from uh, like outside of your Salesforce org. So it has to be global, right? And then you have this get method. So we have already explained, right? Get method is doing what? Get method will help you to get the data, correct? So this is the API that you are writing from which org? Destination org. And the destination org has some, uh, you know, lead record suppose. And that record <coughs> needs to be fetched by your source Salesforce org. In this case, this get API will help you. Get API will help you to get the data. Post will help you to create the data and patch will help you to patch, like, you know, update the data and delete will help you to delete the data. So these annotations will help you to understand, like this annotation at the rate HTTP get, at the rate HTTP post will help system to understand that this method that is written, no, is basically doing a post operation in the web service. This method that has been written, no, this method is actually doing get operation in the web service. All right, so that is why we have to use get method, post method, method and patch and uh, you know delete method. All right, so now uh, you know uh, uh, this is a video where I'm just going to explain theoretically what it is. Next video, I'm going to show you how can you consume this particular. I mean, uh, before even I go and explain you this code, right? I mean, directly explanation of a code is very you know what you call. Uh, I, I especially don't like to get into the code first, right? So you first have to feel it. Right? What is the use of this get method, post method? So I'm gonna show you from Postman by invoking this method, like what is the output of this method? Once you understand the output, right? It will be easy for you to understand this code. All right. So next video, let's go to the next video. I'm gonna explain you uh, by by you know calling this particular methods from your Postman. See you in the next video.